Good morning. Yes, I am going to stack this stack. show up. Yeah, saying <laughs> we're so glad you're watching. It is Friday the 13th, but yes. it is your lucky, lucky day, day because you chose to watch Sissy Lifestyle on this day. And we got a great show for you. Should oh, we be touching you hands? shouldn't be. That is why we have to. <laughs> I'm taking and running with these. These you know, <laughs> you, you know, this is out here in part because we're going to talk about coronavirus yes. and, and its impact uh, on all of us. Mm -hmm. Because if you drive in routinely on a Friday morning yes. in the downtown Cincinnati for rush hour, this was not a routine morning. No, and I it think was not. It was partly the result you of it. You two are saying that the traffic was pretty light. It was pretty, pretty light. Yeah. light. What time yes. do you drive down 71? I'm usually uh, driving about between 8.15, 8.20. And I'm 7.30 to 8, which means I caused the backup that she runs into. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's no more skinny lane either going that's down That's right, there is no more skinny lane. That's <laughs> well, a problem. The, the drive up to, we, we took a trip up to iHeart this morning, the 71 North, there was actually a good amount of traffic going north. Okay. Going north. I was like, am I missing something? Okay, yeah. So not everybody is working from home. Yeah, because right. it was light and easy. And we're still here. But of course, you know, we do talk about the coronavirus. We do remind folks that uh, despite this little prop we yes. have here, it's a good idea to clean your hands routinely. Try not to touch your yes. face mm -hmm. uh, and elbow, uh, elbow, elbow, elbow where possible. Yes. Uh, clean off surfaces where possible. So and let me may I just mention quickly too. I just want to remind people that we have canceled the uh, regional spelling bee that was to be held tomorrow at Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. So if you have questions, you can give me a call or an email at mmorrow at wcpo.com. And um, I just feel bad for the kids, but we are postponing it. So we hope to have a new date soon. Sure. All right. That's great news. That's great news. We talk about all the downsides of coronavirus, but I do want to show you <laughs> what could be considered an upside. If you, if you take a look at a map I think we have that shows the difference between uh, the, the ba what you're looking at is that big red blob is the pollution over Beijing. Yes. yes. Uh, oh, before yes. all on of this left. happened on the left. And then on the right is what happened uh, mm. a week or two later. The pollution is largely mm -hmm. cleared out. The air pollution is largely yes. cleared out. So, uh, you know, there are, there are There's negative a, health effects. But on the other side, there are some. When you think of then that out. day to day, right? So right. before all of this happened and how much pollution there is in the air and, and from a factory standpoint, that is wild. Well, it that's is. what, and that's what I thought about mm -hmm. driving to work this morning yes. too. Is you know that it, yeah. it will have some benefit for mm -hmm. us here. Yeah. Um, not the kind we'd prefer to have, but a little cleaner air. It will, yeah. We'll Maybe get, get out and take a walk. We'll get some cleaner air. Right. Now, I'm going to stick on the coronavirus theme. I know you guys are thinking, okay, enough already. But watch <laughs> this, watch this, because remember we told you about the woman who accidentally ordered a whole lot of Lethera. of toilet paper <laughs> from a company <laughs> with an interesting name. Uh, the company was named Who Gives a Trap Bleep Rhymes with Trap or Slap, okay? Uh, so we started, so in our office, of course, we have no common sense. We started looking yeah. up funny business names, and we came up with oh. uh, some off of HuffPost.com that I think you find for, for get instance. Get ready, get ready. Spruce Spring Clean. No, I really this is like that. This is a good one. I it's like a cleaning company. One. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's a cleaning company, so That's there good. they are. Okay, and this one. Her name is Dr. Fiddler, and she calls her dental service Fiddler on the Tooth. Oh. Get it? See? I think I would yes. go to her as See? my dentist. Yes. Once I yeah. was a rich man. Okay. Do you think she sings to you while she's cleaning your right. teeth? Right. Okay, look at this one. This one. This, listen, that's for real. That is for real. That's not somebody being cute. Not Photoshop. And this is a funeral home. Am I gone? A-M-I-G-O-N-E. I think it's Amigone, but it's... <laughs> Am I gone funeral home? Well, if you're reading the sign, no. Now, these are the fails. Okay, Hindenburger flamed broil. Hamburger. Oh, oh okay, yeah, that's on. sad. Really, that's <laughs> bad. Mm -hmm. We laughed at it in the office, but that's bad. And this one, <laughs> STD contractors. You, I, you will not be receiving a call from any of us, especially it may the have been Sean Ta It may have been Sam, Todd, and Daryl, but I, I think they didn't get it. Oh, here's another one. Sam and Ella's Chicken Palace. Oh, yeah. Sam and Ella's? No, Sam and Ella's. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. go there. And this is the worst of, I think the worst of all. This is a shipping company called Going Postal. 
Coleman. That is not funny. That yeah. is not. It's, it's got a bad kind of The funeral yeah. home is the one that gets me. So, uh, am yeah. I gone? It, you know, if you have a last name, <laughs> you might as well strategically build a business around it. And I give them props. But, well, that was really appropriate. That yes, was very yes, much. I like that. Well, one. we're going to take these uh, fun business names and tell you about a local business that also has a fun spin on it. They're a unique local business and a venue in the heart of Newport, Kentucky that's creating long term memories. Memories. It's called Turn Vintage, and we got the scoop behind the name and the space. Take a look. Okay, right now I am here with Wendy, and she is the owner of the Turn Vintage, and we are in this incredible space that you have created. Talk to us a little bit about the space and what the Turn Vintage is. So the Turn Vintage is a unique event venue. We do weddings, receptions, showers, corporate parties. We just did a Sweet 16 um, this past weekend. So graduate parties, whatever you can imagine we can do here. We seat about 85 and um, we're unique in the fact that we have all the mismatched chairs and tables. Um, definitely have a vintage feel. We also have different plate collections that are vintage. Where did the term vintage name come from? That actually was a collaboration with um, a, a friend of mine and her daughter and we we're like, we originally had a little bit of a different plan for here and we were saying because we're vintage, you know, each century we were thinking turn of the century and then it came out the term vintage. And even this block too, which I think it fits so well, there are a handful of vintage stores. Oh yes. So talk about why you chose this space. Well we loved this space. I mean it's original. The original tin ceilings, so the, cool. the hardwood floor. It used to be a furniture store and so it just lends itself to that vintage feel. Um, the landlord had already had the ceilings painted this beautiful silver so it reflects light which allowed us to do all of our vintage chandeliers. It just was, it was such a great space. It had all the bones that we needed and um, yeah, just fell in love with it. Why weddings? Why did you get into the business originally? I, originally we weren't sure how this was gonna look. We had talked about vintage rentals and the shop and, um, you know, as people would come in, they're like, can we do a wedding here? And we're like, yeah, we'll do weddings. <laughs> so it wasn't kind of, it evolved. Yeah. And I mean, weddings are just fun. When you, you know, it's funny because it, you, the cleaning and, and getting ready and doing all that stuff is kind of a grind sometimes. But when you start, we set all our tables with our vintage, you know, plates and the vintage goblets. And when you start to see it come together, it's like so satisfying. Yeah. And then when you see the joy in the bride and, and groom's face and their family members and everybody is ooing and aahing over your space, it's, I mean, there's not a better job. I mean, in my opinion. So I can feel, I can feel that from you right now. I get excited, yeah, I do, I get excited it. about it, yeah. So what would be then the one thing that you want people to know about what you do here? I think that we really care about each yeah. one of our customers, and I, I truly mean that. We enjoy meeting with them, figuring out what they want for their event, and working towards that goal on a regular basis. Awesome. Wendy, All thank right. you. Thank you this is a pleasure. so much. I appreciate it. And you can find the Turn Vintage Warehouse on Mammoth Street in Newport, Kentucky, or check them out online at theturnvintage.com. Mona? All right, well, you guys know it's no secret. I love dancing. It's fun, it keeps me active and moving. That's why I'm excited about our next guest. She has created a fitness program that is one big dance party. Yes, and I want to welcome back to our show Jess Evans, owner and founder of Dance Factory Fitness. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks Jess. for having me. I appreciate it. So tell us about a little bit about your studio, your dance. Factory. Yeah, so Dance Factory is a little different than your typical dance fitness studio or Zumba studio that you go to. So there's a couple key differences. It's high intensity, so we mix simple repetitive dance moves with things like high knees and jumping jacks to get your heart rate up. There's no choreography, so you just follow along. So if you miss a class, like you're never lost. Um, all of my music is mixed by professional DJs, which, make, which makes it so fun. And then there's three toning sections, arms, legs, and abs. We use weights, which really give you a full body workout. It really does. Yeah. All right, so do you have to know how to dance? No, definitely not. I always tell my clients, like, if you can do a jumping jack, you can take my class. You can have two left feet, and you'll have a great time, get a great workout no matter what. Okay, so tell us, when people come in, what yeah. are they expecting to learn, and what should they expect? 
I always, ex I always tell them to expect a very challenging class. They're always a little surprised. Like I said, it's a little more intense than your, your traditional dance, fitness, or Zumba class. But they always leave feeling totally exhilarated and they're drenched in sweat and they can't believe how much fun they had. Well, I am so excited for us to be totally drenched in sweat. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna invite Allie to come out and we are going to get dancing. Let's go, girls. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's shake it out right here. Some fast feet right here. Let's go. It's Woo! eight. Come on. Seven. Six. Someone throw me a ball. Five. <laughs> I know, right? Give me four. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Two. We're gonna do a little step it out right here. It's right, left, right, left. Hey. Come on. ready. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it says someone else to attend class. Where can they go? So I teach all of my classes right now in Marymount and I do pop-ups all over Cincinnati. It is sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, I love it when you come. You, thank you take it to the max with me and I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> all right. No thank problem. You. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Clyde, take it away. Up here on Cincy Lifestyle. <laughs> It's official, the root beer stand is now open for the season. We'll go behind the counter to see what makes state classic so delicious. Then we go around the block to one of our more industrious communities, Norwood. We'll tell you about its history, the wonderful businesses it has now, and the future of this growing area. We've got all that and a whole lot more oh. in just a few minutes. Finally, a beer for people who don't drink. Root beer, that's it. This tasty beverage got its start in the 1800s, but you don't have to go back in time to get a taste. You just have to drive to Sharonville. The root beer stand has been making its signature drink fresh from scratch every day for more than 60 years. Take a look. Every day I'm surprised at how special this place is to so many people, um, not being from here. You know, just hearing the stories constantly and having so many people tell me, I mean, I'll be out of town wearing a root beer stand shirt in another state and people will come up to me and say, oh, I know the root beer stand. Constantly amazed uh, by how many people know the root beer stand, love it, appreciate it. Um, and not just from in, in Sharonville, but all around the city and even the state, we get people all the time. So we're really fortunate to have such a uh, passionate fan base, so to speak. Well, one of the big things, and this might surprise some people, that makes our root beer so unique is that we don't use municipal water source. We don't use city water. We have our own well on site, and we get all of our water from that source, and it has a unique mineral makeup that gives our root beer a specific flavor. Um, a lot of sugar, uh, a lot of the water that I, that I spoke of, and I think another thing that makes our root beer unique that you won't find in other root beers is it definitely has kind of a smooth finish, not as much carbonation, and uh, a very strong vanilla 
flavor to it. That's probably the, the biggest thing you'll notice if you drink our root beer versus another root beer is it's smoother, there's not as much carbonation, and there's a lot of like vanilla. And we make it right here on site every day and comes out of a tap and not out of a bottle or, or a soda machine. So it's, uh, it's very special. Uh, the chili cheese footlongs probably our number one uh, selling item after root beer, and that's just a classic cheese coney with the chili that we make in-house um, from the original recipe that was created by the original owners. So it hasn't changed in 61 years. You can't get it anywhere else. It's not a copy. It's not sold anywhere. It's made every day fresh right there in the back. Fresh cheese right on top. We also have a couple signature sandwiches that we have that nobody else has that are kind of unique to us. We make something called a Timmy Dog, which has everything we have in the back put onto a foot long, so coleslaw, kraut, relish, ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, chili, cheese, onions, the works, um, which is a very popular sandwich, which has a very unique backstory. Our, um, one of our uh, loyal customers who came in for many, many years and still comes into this day, back in the late 90s, uh, would come in and he'd ask for, to put everything on it. So one year, uh, my mother-in-law, who owned the business at the time too, said, you know what, as a joke, we're gonna put that on the menu. Just as a joke for him, no one's gonna order it. So we did, and lo and behold, it became quite popular. We really try to keep uh, true to those things that have made us so um, successful and also that people love to come here for. I think one of the things people like to come is that we still do things the old, the old way. You know, We still make the chili fresh every day. We don't get it out of a can. We still shred the cheese every day. We don't get it out of a bag. We still make the root every day. We don't get it out of a box. Uh, all of those things are really important, I think, to the success. So we don't change the core items. Now the building gets updated, you know, or we might get a nice picnic area out back. We try to update things to make the experience better, but keep the feel and the nostalgia and the quality um, always the same. I, I really cherish the, the responsibility of getting to carry that on because I get the stories from people every single day. They come up and say, I came here when I was a kid and now I bring my grandkids and stuff like that. So I know how important it is to people, to people here in the community in Sharonville, and uh, I'm, I'm proud to do it. The last thing you want is to be surrounded. That means you're cut off from help and you can't escape. No hope. But Norwood has spent years surrounded by the Cincinnati metropolis, and its leaders and residents will tell you Norwood is doing just fine. Thank you very much. Their invitation? Check us out. After all, we're just around the block. Montgomery at Sherman Road is a busy modern intersection today. But 210 years ago, 1809, they were bare crossroads with just a tavern, coach stop, and a store at what became known as Sharpsburg. By 1869, Montgomery Pike, as it was called, was the major road of a community freshly named Norwood. Today, Norwood is a study in how to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. For instance, Norwood Heights, the community from which the city apparently drew its name, the Heights started in the 1860s as an investment which failed. Yet, as you can see, the Norwood Heights and Norwood itself survived quite nicely. Or take Norwood's commercial past. At Norwood's industrial zenith, GM opened a plant here in 1923. 64 years later, at Norwood's industrial low point, GM closed the end of Norwood, right? Wrong. The city bounced back with the Surrey Square shopping mall and a mixed office development on the GM site that pumped jobs and cash into the Norwood economy. The same with LeBlond Makino, gone but replaced by the glitz and excitement of Rookwood Commons, again to the benefit of Norwood's economy. In fact, Norwood has always been business friendly, the original home of U.S. Printing Company and its well-known spinoff, U.S. Playing Cards, the headquarters of convenience store giant United Dairy Farmers, and the hometown of the Aglamesis Brothers and their unique brand of frozen treats. And don't forget Frisch's, begun when David Frisch took over the family restaurant from his deceased father, ultimately creating a restaurant chain known for its food and its iconic big boy. Norwood has also nurtured smaller businesses, especially where food is concerned, many of them iconic in their own right. Gordo's Pub, Murray Brothers Candy, Quatman's Cafe, and the renowned Sorrento's Italian Food. This tiny community has its share of the rich and famous who've called it home. 
Odds are you know that the late Carl Lindner Jr., the UDF magnate, was from Norwood. But did you know singer-actor-dancer George Chikiris of West Side Story fame grew up there too? How about the actresses Janice Rule and Amanda Tepe? Or the celebrated UC basketball coach Ed Jucker? Norwood boasts one of the highest pinnacles in the region. A drive up Indian Mound Avenue into the Norwood Heights leads you to Water Tower Park, where you'll find the remnants of a burial mound constructed by the Adena people. For a small town of about 20,000 people surrounded by the city of Cincinnati, Norwood has a lot to boast. Perhaps that's why there have been no fewer than six efforts to annex Norwood since 1888, each of them stoutly resisted. And to see why Norwood so vigorously defends its sovereignty, head there and take a tour of your own around the block. Thank you so much, Clyde. Well, we'll be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. Plus, Cincy Lifestyle has full episodes of the show up on YouTube. Find fun segments you've never seen before, or you can watch your favorites again and again. Yeah, that's right. Just search Cincy Lifestyle on YouTube.com. And again, Clyde. <laughs> A quick preview before we get away of what's coming up next week on Cincy Lifestyle. Monday, of course, is National Panda Day. Aww. So join us as we head out to the Cincinnati Zoo to check out the real pandas, not those little black and white ones you see in the <laughs> toy store all the time. We'll tell you about all these adorable red pandas to celebrate National Panda Day. That's going to be fun. And then if you need some love and comfort, then we have some cute faces in need of forever homes. <laughs> Louis Legacy will be in the studio to talk to us more about the power of animal adoption. All that, so much more, starting Monday next week. I didn't want them to know I was the sound effects machine. <laughs> you are the sound effects, but ah. <laughs> make out. it a great day and a great weekend. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, make it a great day.